while doing a full-time job creating content frequently is not easy but when you guys engaging with my content through likes and comments that always encouraging me to do more and more videos and share more and more experiences so if you seen these videos frequently that mean it's because of you because of you adding likes and comments and sharing and talking about this video is the motivation me to create more and more content thank you very much for that today also we are going to discuss one of most important topic that is how we can manage configuration and code separately how we can decouple configuration from your code when you do microservices or any other project having a configuration along with the code doesn't make any sense why because code mean your logic it says how the program execute what the configuration mean it explain the environment so these two things are not going like hand in hand why because configuration is required to execute the logic or execute the code but it is not fully tightly integrated so therefore it's always a best practice to keep the configuration separately when you do a microservice project or any other type of project having a configuration decoupled from your code is the best practice why because having the configuration along with the code doesn't make any sense because your code mean it's your logic it says how the your program work how your business logic process but your configuration says the infrastructure or any other parameters which support to run the code so having those inside having the configuration inside your code doesn't make any sense and also it's a wrong practice when you have the configuration externalized to your code they can manage separately they can live separately and also these password and security keys are really belong to security team not to the dev team or a devops team so when you decouple that you can give the deployment responsibility to the devops team as well as the security responsibility to the security team so they they don't uh, like collide each other i have some people using environment variable for this it's not very bad but as long as you maintain the environment variable or dot env file within your project then you ship your configuration along with your code to github then your secret keys and your urls and your passwords everything stays on the github with your code that's again a bad practice in one of my previous video i explained how you can externalize your configuration in a spring boot project there you can have a separate config server and then you can uh, give the responsibility for handling configuration to the config server when you come to javascript based backend especially like a nestjs you don't have a out of the box solution for that yet they may be introduced in future but so far they don't have a such solution but nestjs is a really cool framework where if you want to implement anything they have interface interfaces and they have a, like kind of integration points where you can inject your configuration and you can you can turn the nestjs the way you want to work so what i'm going to do in this video i'm going to implement similar thing what we did in the spring boot in the nestjs so with this you can keep your configuration externalized to your project in that way you don't have to worry about leaking password or leaking security key so anything but in this example i'm just going to one step that mean i'm going to have a http based server where we it host the configuration so we can talk to that server and pass our service name and get the configuration but you need to go to one more step beyond that so that is in the config server in the config uh, storage you shouldn't store the plain configuration what you can do is you can store the configuration on somewhere like uh, aws secret store or a parameter store and then config server will fetch the configuration from that con that con secret store and then decode or decrypt it and send it back to the service you need to make sure you don't store plain configuration anywhere other than your secret store right in the secret store you can use the uh, certificates to encrypt the uh, configuration but you shouldn't use anywhere else to store this configuration always you should uh, like use the https to do this configuration transport and that mean we are you store in the encrypted and also you transport with encrypted so that mean you can have end to end guarantee that no way are this configuration leak so don't create read the configuration and store in your environment file or don't read the configuration and like store temporary files so anywhere don't do it because then 
someone has access to the file system can get your configuration okay you can uh, think like this so this is my config server right so this is my service let's say service a this service b right so this is the same thing for each service so let's say now service a starting right when the service a, a start during the startup process it talk to config server and tell hey i'm service a give my configuration the example we are going to do today it will return the configuration and then service a will start but when you go to the real production you have to store this configuration on a secret store right so that can be a wallet or that can be a parameter store is a secret manager anywhere so now what you need to do is we have a plain configuration here but it doesn't have this real uh, password or a real secret key let's say database and let's say username app when it comes to password right so this can be something like this right so dollar let's say you are using the aws secret manager or a parameter store to store the password you can say cosmos database app password right something like this now what we can do is when the service a starts is talk to config server saying hey i am service a give me my configurations so now so configuration server sees there are some tokens here this is a token this is not a real password so then it will talk to uh, parameters to or a secret to or wherever you configured and get the parameters from this this it will get the parameters and replace this token and send it back to this configuration service a so now in this way you are not storing plain configuration anywhere and you're transporting through https and then also you're storing with the encrypted store so that way your configuration are very safe right but today in this example we are not going to do this secret store integration because there's a very straightforward you can do it yourself but i'm going to show you how you can customize your nsjs configuration nsjs service to reach the external http based configuration server this is not the out of the box in the to support it so i'm going to show you how to do it here i'm going to share this repository uh, in my video description so you can follow that in here we have a readme file i documented every single step right i don't want to spend the uh, time to like code with you so i created the code and then i'm going to walk you through the code and also the, here is every single step is documented so it's very easy for you to follow up so let's see how to do that so once you create an sjs project you need to install these dependencies and here i'm going to use the mongoose as an example so this can be anything what you want but for our case you need nsjs config nsjs axios and the axios why we need the axios because you need to talk to external configuration server using http to fetch the configurations so now this one i just use as an example like you don't need this in your real project and then i'm creating a new module called configurations and i'm call creating a new service called configurations right so if you go to the project you can see this is my new module this is a configuration module and this is a configuration service i'll i'll show you what is inside that then i'm implementing configuration service so if i go to configuration service right this is very uh, easy to understand i'll i'll explain line by line so here i'm creating a logger this is straightforward you know what it is and then i have a constructor in the constructor i'm taking the http service and then i have a async method saying fetch config what that does is it just uh, create the response object from whatever this coming from right https dot response dot get so it get the response object whatever the call after calling of a config service so before that in the real project you may need to pass uh, authorization token to this configuration service because con configuration service shouldn't support directly and also after this config you may need to pass a service name right because this is just one service so i just hosted one configuration but technically when you have hundreds of service you have hundreds of configurations right so then in here configs you have to pass the, what is your service name and probably what is your profile environment and so and so so now i get the config data right so here i use the console log i don't need this one i just uh, this for debugging purpose and then i return the response data right so that is it why what i'm doing in my configuration service so now 
I need to implement the configuration module. So this is the where tricky part comes. So you can see here, I have a, a HTTP module and the configuration service provider, but uh, I need HTTP module. So this is for this Axios configuration, right? And here you can see I'm creating a static one called for root, right? Here, uh, what I do is I get the configuration module because this is my module and then I'm saying global. This configuration is very global. And then for the load, what I'm doing is I'm passing the async method. I'm creating async method. And there I create the object from the configuration service, right? This is our configuration service we created while ago. And then I you create a uh, config object. And for that, I'm calling config module.load configs. So load config is this one. So you can see here this one. For this one, we need the configuration service, right? For that, we are passing the config service. What the load module does is it call configuration service dot fetch config. So fetch config is the method we implemented here, right? And then it returns the configs. So that's it. That's it. We need to do for the custom configuration. So now we go to app module as usual. And here you can see configuration uh, module dot for root. This for root is the method we, uh, we created. So this one, right? And then this is just example demonstration to show you. So what I do is here for uh, root async, I'm usually because you know this one, I don't want to explain. So you inject the config, uh, you import the configuration module and inject the config service. So this is keep in mind is an SJS config service. Why? Because we, we here in the module, we got the SJS configuration service and then we use, we use the load function override, right? With the load function override, so now SJS know these are the config object because we are returning the config object. So now what we do is here, so I use use factory and for the configuration, I'm just fetching the configuration from the MongoDB URL and database.mongodb.db name. You can understand now this is just a configuration object. It's a, a simple JSON object, right? So now I'm going to show you by running this program. Dev. And you can see um, it started successfully. So now you might think, okay, which part it says the configurations are fetched, right? I can show you in a two different ways. One, I can change the password. So in that way, it will not work, right? So I order the password, right? So now when you start this, it will not work, right? It will complain the password is wrong because it cannot see, it says unable to connect to database. So that is a one way I can show you that I'm fetching the configuration remotely. I can do something like this, console.log, right? This one. Okay, so I'm going to use just uh, just the console.log. So this is just to marking that. Okay, so now I'm going to run this again. So now you can see database name is printed. So I just printed database name, but not the URI because uh, the URL contain password. I don't want you to see the password. So that's what I uh, print the database name. So now anyway, this way it's sure these configurations are coming external to the service. Service doesn't carry any configuration. All configurations are hosted on external HTTP server. This HTTP server is nothing but when you call the service name, it just returns the JSON payload to the uh, this NestJS service. That's it. It's no, no magic, no fancy. You can have a configuration wherever you want, but what the service does is it fetch this configuration and send this JSON object to the caller when it calls. So now you need to think how you can secure that endpoint and so on. So, but this all up to you. I just demo how you can keep this configuration external. So then until we see in the next video, stay safe, take care.